Hi guys, welcome back. So in this video, we are today looking at adding geofencing to your app. So basically, uh, geofencing is the feature where if the if you mark an area as a geofence, uh, like with the location and a radius, then you can monitor different types of transitions, like whether a user is entering a particular geofence, whether he is exiting that, or whether he is inside the geofence for a certain amount of time, which is also called dwell. So basically, uh, some of the applications that you can use it for are reminder apps, like when you're getting close to a pharmacy or any particular shop, you can remind your user to pick it up. Or if you're uh, like, uh, if you're getting close to your home and you want to switch on the AC, maybe your amp can do it automatically. Child location services or even senior citizen location services where you can track their phones if they are leaving certain area. Attendance recording. Uh, and finally, a treasure hunt where basically you can guide users or where to find stuff or whether they are closer to a clue. So yeah, uh, you will need Android Studio, latest Android Studio, minimum is the K29 emulator. And this is how the app would look like. Basically, this is when you're outside Geofence and when you are near the Geofence. So yeah, this is because this app is running, we will be running it in emulator. All the locations are hard for you to San Francisco, but you can change it uh, and like you can create an actual game out of it. So I've already cloned this project. Uh, there were some issues with that. So basically I had to change the Android tools to build Gradle version to 4.2.0 and also the wrapper, Gradle wrapper to 6.7.1. And the first thing is you need to switch to startup branch once you clone the project and then change uh, this is under gradle rapid or properties change this version to 671 and com android build tools build gradle to 420 basically these two things you will need I'll, otherwise the project will not compile properly so yeah uh, let's get started so there are these many activities uh, basically they've used the MVVM model so there is hunt main activity geofence view model uh, notification utils the layout and geofence broadcast receiver this will basically broadcast when you are inside or exiting the geofence so first thing we need to do is to add the permissions so let's go and do that so app manifest and here we need to add our permission so let us copy that so you can see that this app is actually using the background location because the app might not be running when the user is nearing the geofence so we might need to access the background location for the geofence to trigger Okay, now we need to go to hunt main activity and we need to initialize this member variable. Okay. Hunt main activity. Yeah, this is the step two. And uh, let's copy this variable. And then step three is to create a method to check for permissions. So basically we need to add this permission method to check whether the foreground and background location permission have been approved or not. So yeah, this is the one. So we need to replace the full method, not just inside the method. Then we have, uh, basically what they're doing is they're checking two things. They're checking whether we have access fine location and then whether we have background location. Now there is no need to check for course location. Even for course location, you need access for fine location. Okay, the next step is to request the permission. The next method. Okay. Yeah, so here they're requesting the fine access location. And if you, we are running queue or later, which is the member variable that we defined on top, we will add background location also. So two locations we will be uh, requesting. So yeah, this is how we are finally requesting it, request permissions. And then 
we need to handle the permissions which is in before them yeah on request permission result not arrange the code properly okay then copy okay why is this getting copied okay okay this is all six step five So here we are checking whether the user has granted us both the permissions or not. So if the user is not granted, we will send him to the settings uh, screen of this particular activity, sorry, of this particular app where he can grant the permission if he wants to move further. If not, we will check the device location settings and start the geofence. So location settings might be switched off. That is why we have added this check to check for location settings whether the location is running or not whether the user might have switched off the location so there are two things first is permission and then whether the location is itself on or not okay now if you run the app we should actually get the prompt for checking the uh, for allowing the permissions so let's see that okay the app is launching and you can see now we have this permission pop-up so yeah so here actually we need to give allow always because we do need the background location permission so yeah that part is done so the permissions are done permissions are handled the next thing is to uh, check for device location settings and start the geofence so if you have the permission and the user has switched off location, it is still useless. You won't be able to get anything. So we need to really start the location if it is off. Okay. And the priority can be low power, which means we don't really need high accuracy, but something like uh, we do need st still some location with a certain priority. So, okay. So let's go back and go to this method and add code okay so yeah what we are doing here is we are starting the locking setting response task after getting the settings client uh, we also created a location request with only low priority and if there is an exception we don't really do anything uh, otherwise we just show a snack bar Okay, if the settings response is successful, we will add the geofence for clue. Okay, you can see they are just explaining the same thing here. So, if the settings client was returning failure and it is resolvable API exception, which means that the user has to start it, then we are starting a resolution for result with this context so that. Uh, the intent and everything will be provided by the exception itself because it's a resolvable API exception. So exception to be written by a task when Google Play services has failed with a possible resolution. So the resolution itself will handle the uh, code or the intent and all the parameters that it is required. We just need to launch that. We need, just need to start the resolution for result so that it comes back to us. Okay, let's go back to the code. So if it was not resolvable, then we will just uh, present a snack bar that location cannot be enabled and you cannot play the treasure hunt. If it was successful, we will add the geofence. Now, when on activity result, if the request was to turn on the uh, location, we need to again start the geofence because now the user has 
started the uh, location service and then we can now add the geofence so same thing we'll do again check device location settings because by the time it comes back you might have switched off again so yeah we're doing the same again and then we are adding the geofence okay so again we need to create one more member variable which will have the pending intent so this pending intent will be given uh, to us back by the geofence uh, you can say manager or the geofence broadcast receiver okay so yeah step eight geofence pending intent So whenever a geofence update will come, this geofence broadcast uh, receiver will get triggered. This is the pending intent that we will pass. So here you can see we have already created the geofence content or not. Okay geofencing client we already had the member variable but it was not instantiated and then we need to copy this code to the add geofence method okay this looks like a big method maybe they could have moved it somewhere okay step 10 so here yeah let's go through this code so basically if we already have an active geofence we will not add it again so that is why this return statement and then we will get uh, we will remove all the geofence and we will tell the view model that the geofence has been activated we are getting the landmark data so these are the constant or the uh, you can say the location that we have defined and then we are creating a geofence using the geofence builder this is a request id uh, this is the radius in meters and the uh, latitude latitude and longitude that we have defined radius in meters and when the geofence will expire and what is the transition type so if you remember there were three types enter dwell and exit so we are going to use the enter type and the request would be the trigger uh, we will add one more trigger which will be the trigger enter initial trigger enter so let's see what it actually does so again it just maps to the enter event that we are targeting So then we are removing geofences if there are with the pending intent and then we are adding an incomplete listener to trigger to add the geofence with the pending request pending intent and then there is an on success listener which will tell that the geofence was added and we will also tell the view model on failure again we just are showing a toast message So let's run the app again and see how it works. Yeah, we forgot 12 actually. Okay, they have not done it. So, clue geofence added, go to a bridge with a name that does not match the color that it is. Okay. Basically, in San Francisco, you need to find a bridge which is not the color that it is really colored with. So, the Golden Gate Bridge, I believe. Okay. Let's do next and see. Case okay, so they have not given the port for removing the geofence, but they want us to go to broadcast receiver. So let's do this first. 
Okay, yeah, this is still step 11. So here, they are getting the geofence pending intent if the user has entered the geofenced area. And we are uh, triggering it. We are incrementing the found index and then we are just showing a notification manager. We are using a notification manager to send a geofence enter notification. So this is a util class that they have defined. I guess they are just showing a notification on top that you find a clue. Okay. So yeah, a little tricky, uh, but yeah. They are just verifying whether everything is proper, whether it's only getting triggered for the correct transition and whether the triggering geofences, which of the triggering geofences, suppose in case you're using the same broadcast receiver for multiple stuff, you can do that check here. So just mapping the request ID. Okay. Okay. Now we need to mock the location because I'm running it on the uh, simulator. So yeah, let's first run the app so that this code is deployed. So this just uh, they're just launching a notification uh, there's nothing much to worry about if you don't understand this code if there's an error they're just logging it and, and uh, yeah it has worked now yeah so as i thought this is the golden gate bridge so you can do these steps and just come to this map uh, Click on three, these three dots, go to location, uh, find the Golden Gate Bridge using the search, save the point, and then once the point is selected, click on set location. Okay, guys, so after debugging a lot, I just opened Google Maps uh, and it took some time to go through all the locations, and then finally it showed golden gate bridge and then i got this notification so i guess first i need to set the location open google maps in the emulator and then this will work so now if you see or if i just click here yeah now i get the next clue go to a market with an amazing assortment of delicious foods it's a san, san francisco classic so basically this is a uh, ferry building so maybe I'll just save it as query building. Now, for some reason, I need to open Google Maps. Now see, I don't know why it's happening, but this is how this works. So this is like, uh, how geofencing should work without opening Google Maps, but maybe the emulator has some bug. So next is Pier 39. Set location. Google Maps. Okay, maybe it's not close enough, but yeah, you get the idea. Let me just pause it and I'll finish the game and I'll show. Yeah, so finally I reached the Union Square and you can see uh, the treasure hunt is complete. So this is like one way you can use geofencing. You can even use geofencing for exit transitions or dwell transitions. So if uh, some person is loitering around in some place for some time, you can get that transition also as well. So hope you got the idea. If you have any doubts, uh, please join in the forum and we'll try our best to get back to you. See you in the next version. See you in the next video.